Hey, welcome to Gridiron Gurus. I'm Travis Lazarczyk from the Kennebec Journal and Morning Sentinel. Alongside me, as always, is Drew Bonifant. Drew, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. How are you? Good. It's state championship week now, and our guest this week is Coney head coach B.L. Lippert. Coach, thanks for being here. I'd rather be other places this Saturday. <laughs> I'm sure but I can you'd analyze, rather be getting your analyze, team ready. Yeah, but. absolutely. But thanks for having me. All right. Well, uh, kind of just go through the four state games. We'll start with the Class D game, which is uh, – been rescheduled. It was going to be Friday night in Orono at the University of Maine. It's now going to be Saturday night, same time, 7 o'clock, between Wells and Foxcroft. Uh, with the f- weather coming in Friday, it looks kind of hairy. The roads might be iffy, so uh, the MPA was proactive on that and moved it moved it uh, 24 hours later just to be on the safe side. So let's start with that game. Drew, can Foxcroft play with Wells? I don't think so. Um, I was kind of starting to buy into the idea of maybe the teams in D-South were on the come up and maybe Wells was kind of plateauing a little bit maybe there's an there's an upset possibility but seeing the way that that uh that team has taken a step forward Peyton McKay coming on as a fullback it's they've just they're just getting better as the season goes on and it's after seeing what they did against Oak Hill last week it's hard to imagine a team uh taking them down they just have so much firepower yeah and coach uh Tyler Bridge from Wells has been maybe the most talked about class D player in some time yeah I mean he's had games of seven touchdowns and you know and I read you know MBR wherever people are like well it's class D I don't care if it's A B C D E I mean he scores seven touchdowns in the highlights I mean he's a big physical kid mm-hmm. yeah. um you know he's great defensively I remember from last year's state championship game and now he's obviously the feature guy they had other guys last year all the McKay kid since moving to fullback for because of an injury right they moved him there yeah and now he's taken part of the you know, spotlight from from uh, Bridge, but that kid is that kid's a real deal, and he's I don't care what class he's in, he's one of the best players in Maine. Yeah, and it just feels like Wells, while they're undefeated and pretty much rolled through their season with a few you know exceptions and a couple close games, feels like they were tested more than Foxcroft. Yeah. Foxcroft, you know, is a good team. Don't get me wrong, but you know, you look at the LTC this year; it's them, Bucksport, maybe Manacook, and then a lot of teams that struggled a lot of times to even you know get a team on the field you know orno had a couple games where they just couldn't finish due to lack of numbers and it seems like the bottom half of that league is really the poster teams of the the lack of you know numbers and depth in main high school football right now yeah and i mean we, we talked about how comp, how uh, competitive that conference was all season long d south uh, right that is where no matter who you're playing you're playing even if you're playing a team below 500 that team played a team well over 500 tough earlier. So you've got a challenge every week, and they were def- Wells definitely got a tougher challenge week by week uh, than Foxcroft did. Um, I mean, going back to the point, we, we talked about how formidable Wells was when it was mostly Tyler Bridge running, running the show. We, mm-hmm. We've talked about um, that Peyton McKay. He ran for 196 against Winthrop Monmouth in, in the, the semifinals, and then the final ran for 269 <laughs> on nine carries. It's just like, it's insane. It, it's, I mean, how do you take a team that's supposed to be, that's his overwhelming favorite, and then just add somebody who can do just what, I mean, it's just, it, it doesn't add up well for, for Foxcroft. There's, uh, there's a ray of hope um, for Foxcroft. Uh, Bucksport has Carter Tomasoff and Lucas Wardwell. They ran for mm-hmm. 584 yards in the semifinal, uh, went over Matt Nockhook. Foxcroft held them to 195, so maybe there's that sort of thing. We we handled this this two man monster before. Maybe we can do it again, right. but I don't know if those players are to the caliber that these two for Wells are. Yeah, if there's anything else going in Foxcroft's favor, it's that it's in Orono, not Portland. That's true. And uh, the Southern teams have typically struggled making the longer trip up to Orono. I think Oak Hill in 2014 or 15, I'm not sure what, what year, beating MCI is the only Southern team to win up there. I know you guys won your state title there. Yeah. Against yeah, against Kennebunk. Kennebunk. Yeah. yeah, now that it's on Saturday, maybe that's not as much of a disadvantage for Wells. They don't have to go to school right. and then get on a bus yeah. at noon or whatever. Now they can kind of plan their whole day around getting up there by 7. So uh, maybe that small advantage, or maybe a large advantage, actually, maybe that's now been neutralized by the game being moved to Saturday. So Foxcroft's got their work cut out for them. And also, when you're in the spread, and we know this from firsthand experience, like it gets to November and the wind and the rain and the, right. you know, like it's just unpredictable. You know, it's, it's easier or more, it's safer to be a wing T team where the snap is going to be there every mm-hmm. time. And, you know, there's the, not as much exchange going on. So, you know, Wells is not going to be affected by much. They, they run the fullback and then they give it to Tyler Bridge and they're going to be fine. Foxcroft and the conditions, you never know. They're spread most of the time. So it has its advantages, but you get to late November and with the temperature today and the wind, I mean, I, you couldn't throw the ball 10 feet. So, you know, it's a, that'll be interesting to see how the, how the weather is Saturday night. Yeah. Now, the snow coming in Friday shouldn't be an issue at right. either Orono or Portland because, you know, both fields are field turf and will get plowed. But 
does field turf play differently when it's frozen and cold than than real grass? Have yeah, you noticed. Uh, yeah, I think it's a little bit like even we played at Lewiston in our semifinal and it was wet but kind of cold. So I feel like it wasn't. You know, it was a little bit slicker. I, I don't know. I guess I can't think if we played on a rain uh, turf field in the rain. You know, in let's say September. So I, I guess I don't know. It feels like it's a little bit different than maybe you would expect. It's not perfect. I, we, I kind of expected it to be just like you know yeah. absolutely perfect out there, and it, you know it wasn't a factor in our game. But it was a little bit different than um, maybe we were, were expecting. But yeah, I think it's a little bit, a little bit, you know, slick, icier, and that, that's not that's not going to no, help the pack. How, game. You guys played on it in Biddeford in week two. How yeah. were the conditions? Yeah, there on, yeah we to... played Biddeford week two at Hamden, obviously week six, and then in okay. the playoffs. Um, and all three fields are incredible. You know, like right. we're trying to get one in Augusta if anyone wants to donate. But um, <laughs> you know, we, uh, you know, they're just incredible facilities. It yeah. just makes everything easier. It takes a lot of guesswork out of it. So yeah. um, you know, Biddeford's was in, is, was amazing down there because it was their first game on the new turf. So they had a big ceremony. It was you know, mm. several thousand people there, and we won, which was good. Um, you know, so it's it's. Yeah, that's becoming the trend, especially you know in, in Maine, because our winters are late. I guess fall is yeah. unpredictable. So if you have a turf field, it, it kind of mitigates some of the, the potential issues. Yeah, Meselowski and your league will be yeah, starting playing the next year. So. I don't know if the schedule stays the same, but if it does, then we would open up at Meselowski week one. So that's that'd be pretty awesome. Sure. So, okay. All right, let's look at the uh, Class C game, which is the middle game on Saturday in Portland. It's Nokomis versus Freiburg. A couple teams, guys, that are. New to this, Nokomis has only been around since 2007, and uh, last year was their first winning season ever, period. This year, they won their first playoff game and kept going, and now they're in the state game for the first time. Freiburg, never been in a state championship game, but in 1963 won a state championship, which I guess back then you just you played the season and someone said, you, you're the state champion, and you said thank you and took the trophy. <laughs> but, uh, Drew, you and I have seen Freiburg against Gardner, a uh, very good defensive team. Yeah, I mean, it just feels like the opposite of that D game where we've been saying since, since you know, late August that was probably going to be Wells and Foxcroft. Uh, this one, you didn't see. It, it was tough to see either one of these teams. Maybe Freiburg had out of favor, but Nokomis came really out of nowhere. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, Freiburg's been able to. I mean, they Levitt was uh, was piling the points during the season, and Freiburg had the answers for them um, for them both times. So that's that's a... That's a team that if Nokomis is is planning on uh, winning on the strength of their offense, they could be uh, they could be game planning in the wrong direction with this team. Yeah, and what Nokomis has done all playoffs is win on the strength of his defense. Uh, mm-hmm. They played in the last two rounds, Maine Central Institute, defending state champs, and Herman. Those two teams led their conference in scoring, held MCI scoreless, and held Herman, a very good team, to six points. So, coach, when you're playing that good defensively, you know does that. I imagine that breeds a confidence that sometimes playing well offensively can't. Yeah, absolutely. Because you know, if, if they can't score, they can't win. It's right. kind of the philosophy for def- defensive coordinators. And um, we had a great defense this year. So in that playoff game, we had a couple, you know, times balls in midfield in the fourth quarter. We didn't we didn't shy away from punting them deep. If it was on a three and out and getting the ball back at midfield, and we did it, you know, two times in the fourth quarter, it didn't ultimately lead to points. Uh, but yeah, you have that confidence that you don't have to score every possession. You know, it's okay to rely on your defense a little bit. And Nakomas, and we knew Nakomas was this group. Uh, our seniors were pretty good, and when we played them as freshmen, Nakomas had been sort of a you know a little bit of a doormat. Um, one of the coaches texted me and said, 28 nothing at the half. And I'm like, all right, we're doing pretty well. He goes, Nokomis. And I was like, whoa, okay. And so they're, they're really good. So they're the Haining kid. You know, we played them in the uh, exhibition game the next year. I guess I'm going to scrimmage maybe. Um, and so the Haining kid and Graves, you know, they were you know household names by their sophomore year. And I'm not sure anyone expect them to get to this level, but it's pretty cool to see. And for Jake and, the, and that staff up there um, to get to that point is pretty cool. And, and Freiburg, I'll tell you, the, the best player I think I've seen this year, well, maybe not the best player, but the most underrated is Tucker Buzzle kid, number 50, a middle linebacker yeah. and center for Freiburg is unbelievable. Like Levitt, you know, runs that jet sweep so efficiently. And he just ran it down all night, and they, and they didn't have an answer for him. They couldn't they couldn't block him all night, and um, he's he's going to pre- present some problems for who, whoever's blocking him for Nokomis because he is active and physical. He was a great great player. Yeah, he's a guy after the playoff game against Gardner. Gardner coach Joe White singled out, said, yeah. you know, we just couldn't do yeah, anything as a puzzle kid, you know. And, and in general, Freiburg was in every gap. He said, and yeah, you know, yeah, I watched the Levitt game last weekend on uh, NBR, I guess, on streaming and. You know, Levitt rips people all year long, like you said, and yeah. they just couldn't get anything going. Hathaway's son got hurt, you know, why he got yeah. hurt in the second quarter, but the, the backup, the freshman's good player, threw a touchdown, and they just couldn't get any of the run game going. The conditions weren't great, but like you said, they were just everywhere defensively, and, and Freiburg is, uh, yeah, they're going to be a challenge for sure. Yeah, Key's probably going to be forcing turnovers. Like Nokomis was able to turn Herman over last week yeah. five times, uh, once on the Herman two yard line after <laughs> Herman got a stop, um, set yourself up with a two yard drive to score the first touchdown of the game. Um, so if Nokomis can continue playing defense like that, they got a shot. Yeah. And 
and, and not just shutting down one person, but shutting down both the both the pass and the run option. Mm-hmm. Um, option is in passing and running choice, not not we got play, you. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, because because uh, Levitt was able to do that with uh, Calvin Southwick. They held him to eight carries, fourteen yards. They still scored twenty points because Oscar Saunders, the quarterback, was able to throw for one sixty nine and two touchdowns. So I think that's the question for Nakomis is it's one thing to shut down. A or B. It's can you shut down? Yeah. If you shut down or limit or limit both and play, and get this game looking more like those sort of defensive uh, uh, defensive struggle games that they've been able to win so far. Yeah, because against MCI they're playing a very strong run team. Shut down the run on a kind of wet, sloppy night. You win against Herman. It stopped Garrett Trask, who's probably the best player of, in their conference. If he doesn't mm-hmm. win conference player of the year, I'll be shocked. Yeah. Um, and you know they were able to contain him. He still ripped off a seventy-five yard yeah, touchdown yeah. run. But for the rest of the game, you know, they forced him into turnovers and, you know, keep him in the pocket, and they were successful. You know, like I said, with Freiburg, you know, gives a couple different facets that you got to take care of. Yeah. And the stat you pointed out that they allowed through the air against Herman, was it minus four? Minus four yards. Minus four yards. I mean, if you could take a team and make them that one-dimensional, that's, I mean, yeah. you, you really are playing the game on your terms, then you can and you can have a good shot against anybody you go up against. So. Yeah. Can they repeat that formula? I mean, that's, that's the question here. Yeah, and to go back to your point, Coach, about the senior class, these are guys who lost every game the freshman year, every game the sophomore year, and then finally you know, stuck with it and turned it around. Yeah, they've, so. they've been really good. And, you know, like they had big numbers, and we just could see they were going to be good. You know, and they were in our, you know, class B, I guess, or maybe it was a, B, yeah, then they, yep. they went down. Um, you know, so we didn't play against them, but I kept, you know, kept, kept an eye on them, reading all these, you know, Travis Lazar articles every week about <laughs> Nokomis. And, they, you know, they're really good, and they've done a really, well, you know, really good job coaching them up, and it's, it's good to see. All right. Moving on to Class B, uh, we have Brunswick versus Marshwood. Uh, these teams have played each other a couple times in the past in the state game. Each one won by Marshwood. Uh, looks like, guys, Marshwood's the heavy favorite again this year. Yeah, it definitely looks that way. I mean, they uh, they cleaned up against their B South Com- or their B North competition this year. Um, you know, it was kind of fi- it was kind of figuring that Kenneth Bunk and Marshwood may have been for the for the Class B title uh, when they met two great games between those two teams and I mean they're they're gonna be the heavy favorites for this game and they should be uh they they have a they have the core back from the team that won it all last year and they're and just like we were saying about Wells they look like they're picking up uh steam as the season goes too yeah coach you guys have played Brunswick a lot you know they got you in the playoffs this year um what do the Dragons have to do to have a shot to win this game uh, I mean, they played pretty good defense here in the playoffs. You know, um, Jake Harvey came back at middle linebacker. That's made a difference. I don't know if uh, the Richardson kids are ever going to make it back from the broken collarbone. We'd heard yeah. he was maybe going to make it back for us. Then he wasn't even suited last week. I saw on the sideline, so probably he's not coming back. But turnovers and um, you know, Marshwood's big and physical, mm-hmm. um, but. You know, you never know. You're, you're hoping for uh, a few turnovers here and there, and special teams can you know be one way to get a short field or whatever it might be. Um, but March was really good. We you know we thought we had a chance to be in this game or not. Um, but we, so I kind of kept tabs on Marshwood all year, watched whatatever I could, and they're just uh, they're just so efficient. And I, that, you know, Alex Rotzko's you know probably the best coach in Maine. Um, seems that way anyway, and he he just cranks them out, quarterback, running, but it doesn't matter. If somebody gets hurt, the next guy comes in, and they just look the exact same, you know. And their line is huge, like their D line, like the four guys add up to a thousand pounds plus, and so. Um, they're just big and physical, and they don't have a weakness. You know, the secondary a couple of years ago, you know, maybe that wasn't wasn't that great. Um, so you thought oh, if we get there, we could maybe throw against them. And this year, I watched them last week against Kennebunk, and I mean, there's nobody open. You know, they they really um, they do a nice job. So uh, it's uh, it's going to be a challenge for Brunswick, but you know, it, Brunswick, as we found out two weeks ago, they kind of thrive in that underdog role. You know, I think they they like that I mean, maybe more so than even being the favorite. They can kind of convince those kids, and Coach Cooper does a nice job of kind of saying it's us against the world. And um, you know, we we. Heard that, read those quotes on the papers after we beat him week eight and said nobody thought we could do this, and here we are knocking off Coney. So I think that's the rallying cry this week at Brunswick. You know, nobody thinks we can do it, and if they do, then, you know, that's a storybook win. And they've just been so resilient. I mean, you talked about, the, you talked about Marsh, uh, Marshwood's versatility. Brunswick has been, able, has been showing that too, where, yeah, they lose Richardson. That would be enough to maybe not yeah. to, to knock any team down. Well, they find Cam Hathaway, and they just keep going. And then Cam Hathaway gets hurt. Yeah. Well, just feed Donald Bromley or Nick Munn or Jack yeah. Harvey, whoever it is. Yeah, uh, Matt Liner, someone's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah Liner's come out, of no, come and, out of nowhere. He's and good. And that might be the wrinkle where you look at it and say, well, could that give Marshwood some something to kind of keep them up at night is just which back for for Brunswick is going to be the guy that kind of runs the show because they don't like to pass. It's going to be on the ground. So Yeah, and they played the Goddard kid at quarterback a little bit more because some of the injuries True. are fullback they've put um – the Gerard and kid yep. are running back. So and, and Goddard throws a better football. Like he's he's really good, quite a good passer. He'll be the quarterback next year as a senior. Um, so you know maybe it's conceivable they just 
load up the run formation and just take a chance one on one on the outside and hope their guy makes a play. You know, so yeah, you know, that could be a strategy for Brunswick to you know try to get a corner to fall down or you know pass it, whatever it might be, because uh, that kid really throws the ball well. And he's given them a different element. Um, you know, in the last couple of weeks at quarterback, so um, they've got some weapons, as you said, there without a couple still, and that for them to do what they've done is impressive. As frustrating as it is for the Coney, you know, Rams, uh, Brunswick, you know, does a nice job, and um, you know they deserve to be there. Now, uh, Marshwood won the state championship last year. Brunswick won it in 2016. But like Coach Cooper told me a couple weeks ago when they were getting ready to play uh, Lawrence, um, that senior that team in 2016 was almost all seniors, yeah. I think 22, 23 seniors. So a lot of the guys now don't have that institutional memory of state championship football like you know the Marshwood guys might have, like uh, Tommy Springer, the quarterback, is back, and a lot of their line is back at Marshwood. Yeah, Springer's a 400 bench press, like 550 yeah. squad. He's a physical quarterback. You don't usually see that in certainly Maine high school football. Um, and he's, you know, when you have a senior that's been through so much like he has. He, he, did he play in the state game? Like he did. He, he had did. a concussion, but he ended up playing. So he's even got a game, you know, state championship under his belt. You know, that's a major advantage in a situation like this that Brunswick's going to have to overcome as well. And that's a guy who can, get, who can, who can do both. I mean, he made runs. He yeah. made passes on, on the big drive against Canterbunk last week. So that's, that, that's not, a one, that's not a, just a one-trick uh, one pony that you're trying to prepare for if you're Brunswick. That's, that's, a, that's a quarterback who can, who can do both. You want to take away his, his the run game? Okay, he can hurt you through the air and yeah. vice versa. So that, that's a lot to figure out, and it's, it's, it's not going to be an, it's not gonna be an easy uh, matchup at all. No, and to get to back to your point on uh, Alex Roscoe, Marshwood's coach, I think he got there in, what, 2011, 2012? Yeah. This is his fourth or fifth state championship game already? Yeah, and one, so. of my, one of my teammates from college played for him at Long Meadow High School, and I think he went to – 15 straight Super Bowls, I think, and they yeah. won nine of them or something like that. You know, like Western Mass, like he, they were just the preeminent program. And he, uh, the, my, my teammate was the, his first state championship there, or the Super Bowls, as they call them there, and he just wins everywhere. I read an article about, like, he posts, he posts like, a uh, depth chart every day. I'm like, who has the time to, like, change that daily? <laughs> I know he's a retired teacher, but, like, it's amazing to me what he's able to do. I would actually, like, consider driving down to watch them practice just to see, like, what it is they do, that their fourth-string fullback knows as much as a starter. Like, how I, I just – can't reproduce that like our if you know certain guys get hurt for us like the backups have you know virtually no reps and for his program it's like i don't know if they practice for six hours or they i don't know how they do it they are just so well oiled it's such a well-oiled machine that it's almost worth it's definitely worth my time to go watch them have it just turn over like this and still win it's just amazing it's a testament and they've got every one else's numbers are down i mean they've got like 90 kids suited for you know you know friday night so that's you know speaks to his you know ability to get kids committed and get communities involved and that's why he's going to win, or potentially going to win another state championship. He just does, you know. I can't wait for him to retire, so being orphan have a chance. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I, I underrated it. I uh, I had Kennebunk pretty much uh, going to the B final all year long. Just just thought they were playing at a higher level than Marshall. I thought Marshall was, you know, maybe an A minus A, and Kennebunk was an A plus, and they meet in the final and. Yeah, Marshwood has the answers, of course. So yeah. that, that's that's really that that's really that. I mean, not that Kennebunk got got out to the key, you know, yeah, lost by point, an extra point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, they, if that extra point goes into the tie game, who knows what happens from there? But uh, I mean, it, it just was further point, further proof that if it's a big game, Marshwood's going to be ready. Yeah, sure. All right, the last game we'll look at is going to actually be the first game in Portland on Saturday morning at 11 a.m. It is the Class A championship between uh, Portland High School and Thornton Academy, uh, guys. Uh, Thornton's kind of just rolled throughout the uh, Class A South throughout the regular season. I don't even know if anyone stayed within 10 or 15 points of them. Um, does Portland have a shot? Uh, uh, better shot than, than Foxcroft, I would think. But, it's it, again, it's, it, it's, it seems like it's a consistent theme for the show today. It's just it's a, really, it's a real uphill challenge. I mean, the one thing I think you, that you look at if you're Portland is they played Bonnie Eagle tough uh, yeah. when they played in one of their – uh, a South cover games yeah. or crossover games, seven seven going to the fourth, and Bonnie Eagle had a what qualifies as a as a close game against Thorne. They lost forty to twenty one. So is that right. something where you look at it and say, okay, if we can, you know, if we can look at what made the difference in this game and what made the difference in that game, and try to find some just a few plays that we can kind of turn around, or a few things that we can attack, but that's kind of flimsy to hope, pin your hopes on is oh, because we play close with. You know, we're A, we play close with B, they play close with C, therefore we can do it. <laughs> right. That's tough. It's and and Thornton I mean, we saw what they did in the uh, uh in the semi, in the final against Scarborough. That's a team that's 
that's playing at a high level. Yeah, and we talk about Marshwood, you know, being dominant in B. Thornton's doing the exact same thing yeah. in A. Since yeah. 2012, they're going for their fourth championship. I came out of the junior tailback that transferred from out of state. I'm like, Thornton doesn't need transfers that are superstars. <laughs> yeah. They've got enough as it is, so they'll just get richer when he comes in. And Anthony Bracamonte gets a lot of the you know attention because he had 300 yards rushing the last week and mm-hmm. on primarily like jet sweeps, so almost a Jarrett yeah. Flaker last year for Scarborough where they just get him to the edge and see you later. You know, if he's not – the Fitzy winner, you know, Bridge is in consideration, but, um, you know, Rockamani is the real deal. And um, to do what he did against Scarborough, was what he's done all year, you know, in big games, you know, a couple, you know, kick returns for touchdowns, just stuff that, like, you know, superstar players do. And um, you just got to keep the ball away from him on special teams. And then but you can't do that when they're on offense. They can hand it to him whenever they want, right. and he's just a, ready to go off at any point. You know, in Portland's played good defense. They're well coached. Um, I don't remember the kid's name. Is it's Elowich or something? The linebacker yeah, there. Yeah, he's a really good player. I've seen him play. He's, uh, he's a tough kid. So I'm going to talk to those in the regular season and um, in the postseason game. And he's a he's a really outstanding player. So they've got they've got some weapons. It's just a matter of like Thornton's depth. They just have linemen and quarterbacks and receivers. And you know Thornton lost you know the quarterback. And everyone thought, wow, geez, that's a huge loss. They might not be all that good this year. And <laughs> they've just you know steamrolled everyone. And that's a well well oiled machine down there as well. And they, like I said, everyone else. His numbers in the state are kind of dwindling in Thornton's youth programs. Got you know kids mm-hmm. gets, everywhere. Get, keeps growing. Yeah, yeah. and uh, it's just it's, a, it's just a really a, a tribute to those guys and their effort putting it forward. Yeah, it takes community support and money, uh, but it takes effort. It just takes you being there and you know talking up the sport and and trying to overcome some of the negatives associated with it with concussions or whatever. They mm-hmm. just do a great job of rallying and kids that are young in that community want to be Thornton you know Trojans when they get to high school and you know a good chance over your four years are going to win a gold ball or two. Is there something that, you know, the, the coach in you that kicks in when you see somebody like Barack Amani where, where you think, okay, if you're going to stop it, you have to load the box or you have to, you know, spread Hope out. for an injury? Ha- uh, I think, yeah, you just can't. I mean, you can slow them down. I mean, that's what, you know, Levitt and other teams that run that jet sweep, you, it's 2-2-2-70. Two, two, two it's like if he gets that seam, he's gone. And that's yeah. so you just, as a coach, you're just so nervous. And, you know, we've played against other athletes like that where you just try to fill every gap. And if you just leave one open, it's over. And it's like you can slow him. It's, it's just a matter of time until he pops yeah. one. And it's like, it's a coach. It it's, keeps you up at night. You're like, how are we gonna like, keep it, keep it away from him? And, and you just can't. Eventually, he's gonna pop one. And you know, it's a just and it's just, it seems like players of his caliber. It's at like the most inopportune time. You're rallying. You're feeling good, and then he takes one seventy on yes. you, and you go. Okay, this might not be our day. We can't stop him. Yeah, all you need to do is over pursue by the slightest yeah, bit it. or miss tackle. That's it, yeah. yeah, he doesn't need much. Yeah, and the cut back, and he's good at that too. Like you, you do over pursue you. You're all aggressive to go get him, and he goes Whoop, out the back door, and, and then he's really gone. There's nobody around, and so uh, we've had our fair share. Of those guys can be north to have to stop, and I, I have no, I have no game plan. If Portland's looking for me to give any suggestions, <laughs> I've got no game plan for Anthony Bracamonte other than you know hope he's you know sick or something that day. Now, Portland beat Oxford Hills by a point yeah. in the uh, A North. It looks like A North is tightening up a little bit with some of the uh, old Pine Tree Conference Class A teams that used to be in the league with yeah. you. And then when we split the four, Oxford Hills, lose to EL, they're all kind of, you know, maybe getting closer yeah. to com- competing with these, you know, the old like Portland, Chevers, and, you know, Wyndham was down this year, but they've been yeah. dominating that league as well. Um, what do you think it's going to take to, to get one of these former Pine Tree Conference teams to actually win this league yeah. and be in the state game? I was really cheering for Oxford Hills. You know, they've had you know, the great tradition for a long, long time, and um, they had some down years there. I know the parents were, you know, trying to run the coach out maybe a handful of years ago, and, you know, uh, that's always kind of alarming as a coach myself. Sure. Uh, so for him to, you know, survive that, and, you know, the Carson kid, I saw him play hoops here, and he's going to Maine to pitch, and you know, I saw him play hoops here, and it's his third best sport. He had, like, 24 and 16. And yeah, I, great I, I was like, this is his third best sport. So I watched him, you know, play quarterback this year, and um, he's just a great player, you know, big and athletic, and obviously they graduate him. But it seems like we played their youth programs, you know, coming up through here, and they've got really good numbers, really good athletes, and it seems like, you know, so that coaching staff has support now. So I, I think it's a matter of time for Oxford right. Hill. So whether it's next year, it's, it's within a handful of years, they're going to be, you know, winning one of these and, and going on to play in the state final, whether they can beat the Thornton, Scarborough, Vaughn Eagles remain to be seen. But um, it's good to see because Oxford Hills, you know, there's certain programs. It's like college football, college basketball. You don't want to see certain programs down. Um, right. And they were down for a little while, and it just felt weird because Oxford Hills, like when I played, used to get the schedule and go, ooh, week three at Oxford Hills. That's not going to be yeah. fun. And it feels you know? weird that like, Bangor's been down, though they won a few yeah. games this yeah. year, so maybe they're on their up sick back. But it just I think high school football in Maine is better when you know, like these classical yeah. schools like Oxford Hills and Bangor you know, are – 
competitive. Sure, yeah, I agree. And same, you know, when the Red Sox and the Yankees are both good, it's better. Yeah. It's not great when the Red Sox win it, but uh, <laughs> it's better. You know, Lakers and Celtics or whatever it is, yeah. you know, the sport is just better for it. The Cowboys, as much as I hate to say that, it's just better because you either love them or hate them. And in this case, it's like Thornton. Bangor, when I was growing up, everyone hated them because they won every sport all the time. You know, and it was like yeah. you know, everyone cheered against Bangor. It didn't matter because they usually won. But um, it's good to have those teams that are just like, you know, the benchmark for everyone else to aspire to. So for Bangor to be down is weird. And Oxford Hills on the rise. And it's, I think it's a matter of time for Bangor, too. They're just they're too many kids and it's too yeah. much tradition that they'll get it sorted out. Sure. All right. Well, hopefully we get closer games this year than we had last year. I don't think any of them was close last season. No. I mean, 30 to 13 in the C game up in Orono was the closest we had, right? Yeah. Yeah. That was that was what uh, qualified as a instant classic. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. For uh, Drew, for BL, I'm Travis. Enjoy the games on Saturday, and we will see you next year on Gridiron Groups.